My name is Jeff H. Seip and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. Three of those years were spent hiring program managers. And since I released my first program manager interview video 10 months ago, I've received a ton of comments. Thank you so much. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of clients who are interviewing for program manager roles, a lot of which have been at Google. Um, and I've spent more time learning about the position. So a lot of that has been in conversations and some of that has been doing research. And I realized I needed to do another video. So today's video is program manager interviews, a deeper dive. And in this deeper dive, we're gonna really break it down in two different ways. It's seven items. The first two items are gonna be a little bit more interview focused, more generic interview focused for PMs. And then the last five items are gonna be really more specific to interviewing for this type of role, specific sections like we called out in that first video. And even though those concepts are focused for program managers, there's a lot of valuable content for anybody interviewing. If you like my content, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And before we dive in, a quick quote from a program manager that I worked with at Google. They told me, what we look for in program managers is not having the answers, but the ability to find the answers. And this is so impactful and a great segue into item one, ask questions. This is not unique to program managers. Every candidate should ask questions in an interview, but PMs specifically need to ask great probing questions. And this really starts with listening. So if you're truly listening to the question, you're gonna to start to think about, okay, how does this question apply to the PM role? And what is the outcome they're looking for from this question? And based on those two items, ask specific follow-up questions to determine the why. And these questions are gonna show an ability to listen, to communicate, to problem solve, and lastly, to understand your audience. And a PM interview is gonna consist of interviewing with other PMs. Other PMs will wanna know that you're not afraid to ask questions. Questions will allow you to determine how to best move forward. Item two, have a plan. Similar to behavioral interview questions, when you have a prepared example, understanding the complexity of a PM role and having a plan for how to answer common questions, common scenarios that come up is really critical. So this specifically refers to open-ended questions. So you're gonna take the standard path with these questions. You're gonna restate the question. You're gonna ask follow-up questions. And then based on the answers to your follow-up slash clarifying questions, you will tweak your already prepared plan. Okay, so what do I mean? For example, typical questions in a program manager interview are gonna be, what are the steps you take when creating a new program? When you step into an existing program, how do you know it's being run efficiently? How do you identify why a program is over budget or behind deadline? What are the steps you take when dealing with stakeholders who cannot agree, etc.? And as a PM, you've likely faced all these situations, all these scenarios multiple times. So let's take the example of a PM stepping into an existing program. You're probably going to review any existing documentation, review budget and timeline, review resources, review data and scope, set meetings with the stakeholders, collaborative partners, meet in small and potentially larger teams, and then create a plan and a shared vision to work towards those goals. And so there's a number of different ways you can present and communicate this information, but let's go back to step one. So I would dive through those seven, eight, 10 items, however many you're gonna present in your plan and say, Jane, is there one area you want me to focus on more than another? Remember, Jane might be struggling to find a PM that she believes can really lead without authority these stakeholders. So by asking this question, it's super impactful because the rest of the information might just put Jane to sleep. It might really make her disengage and you want her super engaged. So by asking that question, you might be able to identify what's most important to her. And this is your starting point, right? You're going to tweak it down and get a little bit more niche if it's a PM for supply chain versus a PM for security, et cetera. But examine what are the most common scenarios before going into these PM interviews and just know the steps. 
you're gonna tweak this a little bit, but every single tech company is gonna ask you these types of questions, so having that plan is super important. And so now let's transition and get even more PM specific. So item number three is stakeholder leadership. Now, stakeholder leadership is often referred to as stakeholder management, but I use this wording for a reason. You are leading without authority. You are not their manager. So anytime you hear this phrasing, intentionally change the word from management to leadership. It will work really well for you. So how does this show up during a PM interview in a number of different ways? So one, communication, and that comes with active listening and asking great questions. Influence, so influencing without authority, when change is needed, and when conflicts arise. Expectations, so this is clearly defining the process, setting goals, having metrics in place, and then ultimately working towards that shared vision. And other items might include risk management, presentation and facilitation skills, and ultimately just being an awesome and great coach. Some questions might be, what do you do when stakeholders don't agree? How do you proceed? What does the first meeting look like when you're stepping into a new program or existing program? How do you determine that you have the right stakeholders in place? And when a program requires change, how do you communicate that to stakeholders, etc.? Creating answers that ask great questions when you have a plan and can touch on communication influence, expectations, and these other items is gonna to lead to great success. And one other important item that continues to come up with my clients and is really critical is these stakeholder challenges, right? Stakeholders that don't agree or are misaligned and you're meeting with them individually and then you're bringing them together, put me in the room. Are you using a whiteboard? Are you using a Google presentation? Did you order pizza? Like, put me in that room, get me into that room, because when you can make the visual representation that puts me sitting there with you, it just helps me have greater connectivity. So it's really, really important. It's such a common question, and all my clients go very generic. Put me in the room, it really helps. Item four, collaborative partnerships. So definitely a crossover from item three, but the big differentiator is Everybody involved in the program is likely not considered a stakeholder. Maybe they're a collaborator, maybe they're a contributor, but their roles are super important. So they could be a stakeholder, but they could also be another program manager. They could be a project or product manager. They could be on the tech side. They could be on the business side, internal, external. They might be a subject matter expert that you knew you needed as a resource from the beginning or one that you needed to add as the project went on and you really realized there was a gap or a hole and you needed to bring that person in. So how does this show up during the interview? If you look at any job description for a program manager, collaborate, collaboration, collaborating will be a constant theme in any of those job descriptions. And so when collaborating across groups, I just want you to be thinking about, is it a large program? Are the teams distributed? Dealing with conflicts? dealing with being over budget or behind deadline and, and not having enough resources, et cetera. So keeping in mind how you communicate, how you lead without authority. And lastly, and a big one in this space is how you recognize your own strengths and weaknesses. Because as we collaborate, especially in these larger programs across larger groups, we're really relying on the team. So continue to involve that word team, continue to bring team into the mix. Item five, shared vision. And this is a great segue from item three and item four. Your ability to speak about a shared vision is a direct result of excelling at stakeholder leadership and working with collaborative partners. So a shared vision will recover a lot of different types of interview questions from scope and scale to defining, creating, and documenting process to creating and aligning expectations and goals, to how do you utilize metrics, to how you communicate, and ultimately in a shared vision, how you compromise. This topic and any of the topics I just mentioned, they could be their own video, and that's speaking to the complexity of the PM role. 
So the two most important items when speaking about a shared vision, specifically in an interview, is that you do continue to focus on team and you have a plan for a shared vision. So you're utilizing this term throughout the interview, but defining the components of what a shared vision looks like for you and, and what success looks like with a shared vision is gonna be super impactful and connect you to the interviewer who is again, likely also a PM. Help them really understand how you created the shared vision when stepping into a new program or an existing program. Item six, emotional intelligence. EQ is gonna help you have greater access in any role in any interview. PMs will test you on every single aspect of EQ. So this is perceiving emotions, using emotions, understanding emotions, managing emotions, self-awareness, self-regulation, social skills, empathy, and motivation. And so specifically how this will show up is how you're adapting and adjusting to your interviewer. Really asking those great questions, having a plan, having a good back and forth is one way it's gonna show up. And then sometimes specifically saying emotional intelligence words out loud. For example, at the end of a behavioral interview question where you're applying those great learnings, you might say, what I learned was not only how to understand emotions and how they impact in performance, but how understanding these emotions coupled with showing empathy made me a better PM. Lastly, doing a little bit of research on EQ is super helpful just so you can get a greater sense of connectivity for your behavioral answers and for your plan. Item seven, facilitation and presentation skills. I intentionally saved this item for last because it's gonna show up in every way, from how you ask questions, to how you outline your plan, to how you lead stakeholders, to working with collaborative partners, to creating a shared vision and ultimately utilizing EQ. Specifically during the interview, this is gonna show up in a couple of different ways. So one, how you present and how it appears and what it looks like. We talked about this before, put me in the room. If you're putting me in the room, I'm going to visualize you presenting to a group and that's so important. So whiteboard, presentation, pizza, vegetable curry, whatever you're ordering, I wanna get a great visual. I wanna know if you're sitting with Jane, Sue, Bob, etc. Secondly, how you present to upper leadership, a skip level and up above, is gonna be really important too. Multiple of my clients have had this question in their interviews. How do you present to leadership? What's your strategy? What are the three most important items when presenting to leadership, facilitating with leadership? So just know the answer to that question as well. It's just gonna be critical to the position. It's a lot of content, and I always throw a lot of content at you in these videos, but I think I needed to do this follow-up because these roles are so dynamic, so complex, so robust, and if I'm not sharing all the information, I'm not really supporting the audience, supporting the community. If you like my content, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and I truly hope that this is a great follow-up and this additional information helps in your program manager interviews. Thanks so much.